Hi there, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to cover the basics of the serverless framework, which is a popular deployment framework for function as a service. And it supports network providers, including AWS Lambda, Azure Function, and Cloud, Google Cloud Functions. We can use the serverless framework for creating a new project. If we don't, we have to specify the template. I'm gonna show you later, but basically the serverless framework has different providers and different use cases, all configurable by a uh, YAML file. So let's start by, um, if you haven't installed the service framework yet, in order to install it, you just need to run npm install minus g serverless. I've already uh, launched this command before, so I have the serverless framework installed, as I can, and I can show you running serverless minus version, I should get something back, yes. And also, just for simplicity, if you want to, you can also call it SLS, and it's, it's going to be the same thing, it's an alias. So in order to create our first project, uh, go into a folder, I call the, the folder serverless framework, and you run SLS or serverless create Let's try like this, and it's gonna throw an error because we have to specify a template. Okay, in this case, we're gonna use a Node.js template. So the, the the complete command is SLS create minus minus template AWS dash Node.js. For a list of all the frameworks and all the templates, you can go on the uh, serverless docs docs dot servers dot com. So in this case, it's saying successfully generated boilerplate for Node.js. Perfect. So let's explore the code using Visual Studio Code. So I'm just run it right now. And I'm gonna open the console here on Visual Studio as well. So as you see, we have two files. One is the Lambda function code called handle.js, where we have the a very, very simple function hello function with is basically returning 200 as a status code and just a message and the input event and the other file is the configuration file that we're gonna explore later let's first try to deploy our first lambda function using the serverless framework so it's gonna be just sls deploy and it can take the first deploy can take like a few seconds like up to 60 seconds maybe, because what it's doing under the hood is creating all the stack for us. So it's creating the CloudFormation stack, it's deploying the code on an S3 bucket, it's configuring the API gateway, and it's creating, of course, the, the Lambda function. So I'm gonna stop for a, bit, for a second, and then we see, we're gonna see the deployed function. Okay, the deployment has finished, as you can see here, is uh, uploading CloudFormation file to S3, stack create, and it's validating the stack, all the CloudFormation actions plus the upload to S3. But since I use the very basic template, um, I don't have any endpoints, so I, I don't have any way to uh, call the Lambda function except for like logging into the AWS console and run it from there. So we what we want to do is to go on the serverless YAML file. And as you can see, the sample YAML file has uh, an attribute called events. And on the events, we can see an HTTP API. We are gonna uncomment this block. So we're gonna just remove this comment here. And we're gonna enable an, API, an endpoint, API endpoint. So this, this um, configuration is going to create an API gateway endpoint on our AWS account. Now that we have uncommented this, uh, this the, the new configuration, let's just redeploy using, again, SLS deploy and see what happens. So this, this in, in this case, the deployment will be uh, faster since the stack already exists. You only need to, updating, to update the stack. So it should take way less seconds than before. And the output of the uh, service deploy should show us the API endpoint that we can call from the browser. As you can see, the endpoint now is a, a get endpoint with the URL that we have to call in order to get back the, the function. So let's go on the browser and test it out. 
and we should be we should see the message yes so go serverless version 1.0 and then we have all the event output here with all the headers request context and all the other stuff so if we quickly um, modify the lambda function we will see like uh, we can add something like hello Enrico and just we just redeploy the function with service deploy we will see that the uh, message now is going to be updated and we're going to see the new version of the API live and we have the function updated uh, if I reload here go serverless and Enrico okay perfect now let's go back to the serverless.yaml and spend a few moments to go through the structure of this file so I'm going to delete some of the comments that are not really needed for these basic um, use cases. Use case. First, we can see the service uh, attribute. So service framework is a concept of service. This is just a way to group related functions together. It allows you to share the code between functions easier. And when you deploy all the functions in a service are also deployed together as a unit. We then have the provider where we specify the provider name and the function and the runtime. And then we have the functions block where you can define the name of the function. So this is going to be hello function. The handler is going to be a uh, handler, which is the name of the file. As you can see here, dot hello, which is the export of the file. So here you can define multi multiple uh, function in a single file, but I suggested to use different files. Then you go on the events, which is like where and how you want to call your Lambda function. In this case, we are using HTTP API, which is creating an API gateway. But you can also use a WebSocket or an S3 bucket. Uh, you can schedule the AWS Lambda to run every 10 minutes, for example, or run after an SNS topic. So use an SNS topic as the trigger of the Lambda function and all the other use cases you want to use on your Lambda function. Okay, now that we have shown how to deploy Lambda function, the only missing piece is the permission. So in this um, quick demo it was very easy to deploy the Lambda function with the API gateway because the serverless framework was picking up the default role that I have configured on my AWS CLI which has administrator, administrator access, so administrator permissions. It can basically do anything on my AWS account. This is, of course, is not the best practice, especially in you know big companies. And if you want to limit the permissions to that you give to your developers. So the service framework, as I was saying before, is creating like API gateway endpoint is uploading files on S3. So it's creating a bucket for the deployment and it's creating the cloud formation and is triggering the creation of all the resources. One approach is, as I said, to give full admin access. It is like the quickest way to test out the serverless framework, but it's not ideal. Another way for, of doing it is to create a dedicated user just for deploy. So you will use that user just for deploy your Lambda function, your serverless stack. And you can start from, let's say, giving the admin access to your developer's account. So your developers can do anything with uh, their account. But in order to deploy the resources, they will have to use that user. And I will suggest that you start like small and gradually expanding the set of permission that you give to the deploy user. And you can actually see on the AWS console here, I get like um, a Lambda power user. You can actually see all the, if you go on the access advisor tab, all the services that are needed uh, for, for the user, for the deploy user. So in order to create the the correct set of permissions you go here and you see all the services that are needed in order to deploy your stack and this is like uh, i see this is like a good compromise between security and let's say accessibility of uh, your um, deploy user and that's one piece of advice that i give you in order to um, manage 
the iron rolls inside your AWS account. I hope this video was useful. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And thanks for watching, guys.